So let's discuss the recent new releases from AP. Or the real question might be, what the heck is going on? Everybody knows I'm AP gang. I love the brand. I support the brand. Although most collectors usually for some reason tend to lean more towards Rolex or Patek. AP kind of seems like sometimes it's that brand that's a little bit on the edge, we'll say. I like them. I love AP. I love what they do. I love how they look. Yes, the Royal Oak is the most popular watch from their lineup, but they do have a couple other variations that do also include the offshore and the concept, so on and so forth. The real question is that I want to ask is, what is going on with AP's latest releases and do some of you at home like them? I'm not talking about the 50th anniversary models. I think that, well, you know, that kind of is something to celebrate, something to discuss. If they did hit a 50th anniversary, I mean, you're just not gonna pass by it and not do anything. Some of the models that I do love from AP that have blessed us would be the 15202 and even the new 16202. Whether it's in yellow gold, which is my favorite, or how about that salmon dial? Can't ever let go of that stainless steel with blue dial because it'll always be a classic. Doesn't matter which Royal Oak you go with. But lately I just kind of feel that there's been some new drops this year that are kind of unnecessary. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. That's why I want to ask this question. I want to see what you guys at home are thinking. Is it just me or do I feel that some of these models, although they may be nice, just are a bit unnecessary? Let's go over some of these models and see what we think. So the first one that I want to talk about is the Music AP. I don't get it. It looks like a diver with an equalizer in the background, you know, effect on the dial. I'm not really sure what they were thinking when they came out with that watch. Initially, when I saw it, what I thought was, this is cheesy. It's corny. I get it. There's going to be people out there that are musicians, producers, stuff of that nature, you know, engineers. And they're gonna want that, but I find it corny as hell. What I don't understand is what was the need for that release? Like, I could understand if it had been released in collaboration with an artist, because then it makes a little bit more sense because when they do these collaborations with the artist, they get some feedback from the artist. Maybe the guy said, you know, it would be cool to have an equalizer in the background. Understand that now. It is so and so's AP Offshore, that also kind of adds a little bit more of effect to that watch. But it just being this music edition, I mean, it just looks corny. In my personal opinion, I think they have so many other nice watches out there. They have so many watches in their lineup that are nice, that what is the need for that exact one? I mean, what are we gonna do next? What's next? We're we gonna have a football on the dial? I mean, I just, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't, you know, I don't, I think that these watches can be themed, but the biggest problem that I have is that when I saw that, I got the instant worrying inside me. Everybody knows I'm a fan of the brand. I love AP. I'm AP gang. I love everything that they've done this year. But when I see a watch like this and they debut it, first of all, I thought it was a joke from one of these like watch meme pages. I legit thought it was a joke. Then I saw it on their website and I thought to myself, are these guys pulling a Hublot? You see, prior to the brand Hublot even existing, had AP have done this, then maybe it would have been like, okay, maybe. But post the Hublot era, what it does to someone like me that's an AP fan, it just makes me think, looks like I only be buying the classic from this point on, or some of the older models because these new ones are not resonating with me. And I personally think that that watch is cheesy. So the next one I wanna talk about is the Ceramic Perpetual in the Blue Smurf. I mean, it looks like everybody came up to me and asked me, all my friends, all my clients, all my collectors, hey, what do you think about the Blue Ceramic? You love it, right? And I'm like, eh, I guess. I just, I'm not really sure what was the need for that. It's like. It just looks kind of weird. 
it really honestly just looks kind of cheap to me. You know, in theory, you would think that it looks nice and I'm not saying that it's terrible. It, it clearly is gonna be a good seller because everybody already asked me about it and everybody loves it. I just personally, when I saw it, I thought, I don't know how I'm really feeling it. It's not the blue because for example, a Richard Mill RM11 John Todd is blue. And I like that watch. But I think that that watch, the blue is interpreted different because it's NTPT carbon. So it's kind of like a matte finish with some white because it's got that marbleized effect in the carbon. And then you have a blue strap, which is a different material matte as well. So you have like this mixture of blues and it's not just all one color. Whereas the Ceramic Perpetual is all solid blue and shiny. So for me, it just looked like a Lego watch. I don't know, it just looked plastic. I'm not exaggerating, that's kind of what I felt. And then when I saw the pictures on social media of the celebrities wearing it like LeBron James, uh, Ed Sheeran and like the CEO of AP, it like further solidified my opinion when I saw it on the wrist. It just looks cheap to me. And the real question that I keep having is, what is the need for it? I, I don't get it. As if, as if they don't have enough models that people already want. I'm not really sure what was the need for it, but my opinion is, it looks cheap. So the next one that I wanna bring up is where I feel kinda was my breaking point. Where when I saw this, it was like my legit breaking point where I said, what the hell's going on? I'm gonna do a video and we're gonna talk about this stuff. So AP decides to then re-release the rubber clad. What the hell for? Like, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like AP re-released a few years ago, The Beast. For some of you that don't know at home, The Beast was the first original design of the Royal Oak Offshore. It's got that really plain dial with the small tapisserie, you know, no numbers, no nothing. But that was the first Royal Oak Offshore design. It makes sense to re-release it years later after it's been discontinued for a while, you know, for some of the guys that want that model. It's a throwback. I get that. But the rubber clad was discontinued like the other day. And then you re-release it. I mean, guys, that was a model that although it was popular, was kind of like a headache, all right? It has a gold bezel that has a rubberized coating on top, which at that time made sense. At this point makes no sense. I would have probably understood if it was a re-release of the same colorway with a black ceramic bezel and the buttons and the crown. But no, no, I went on the website and I looked. It says gold rubberized bezel. And for those of you that don't know, they did that originally so that if you tap the watch, it doesn't scratch. It's true. But if you tap it just a little bit too hard, it rips the rubber and it looks terrible. Like don't, these are watches that when you buy pre-owned, you have to look at the bezel because the bezel looks terrible. But my main question is again, what is the need to re-release the rubber clad? I think that was my breaking point. Why would we re-release the rubber clad? Oh, it's gonna have probably a clear case back. Who cares? I don't understand it. Maybe some of you at home could give me some clarity on this. It just doesn't make sense. You got this watch, it was popular. The sales on them died down, was a nice design. And then, hey, let's just fire the, fire the molds back up and let's just, uh, you know, do another lineup of the rubber clad. Makes no sense. So the last two that I'm gonna talk about, I don't necessarily hate. I just, I kind of feel like it's fluff, all right? We have the 50th anniversary ceramic chrono, which by the way, I love. I love that release. You know, the black ceramic chrono with all the gold details on the dial. Then they come out with the one, with the blue dial. Is it cool? Yeah, I like it. But it, again, when I saw it, I thought to myself, what are they doing in there? Like, what is going on? It's just like, it's almost like they're just firing off all their missiles prematurely. That's a watch that 
I personally feel that we could have definitely have gotten next year. There was no need for that this year. Of course it's gonna be nice. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. It's black with the blue. I mean, I personally, in this case, it's one of the few times that I would take the black on black over the black on blue. I'd rather have the black dial over the blue dial on this one. But it's one of those pieces that I just don't really understand either. Why, what are they doing? What is their master plan? I guess I'm just getting kind of worried that with all these releases, I don't want to think this because I love AP. And I do think that all of their premier models without all the fluff are always going to be fan favorites and are always going to be valuable and they're always going to have a following. But too many of these releasing colorways gives me that vibe. You know what I'm talking about. But the last one I'm going to say is the Concept Turbion, okay, with the green accents. A couple of buddies of mine were like, hey, what do you think of that new concept? I'm like, I guess that's what I felt. That's just kind of like what I feel about all these releases. My response is, I guess. Except for the music one. That one's corny. Oh yeah, and if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel.